I really hope that this is not this is not laggy because the internet here is not very good. But yeah. Um. <laughs> no. Hi. Hello. Do you want to see what I'm working on? So, do you remember the? Hi. Oh my gosh! So many people. <laughs> Oh wow, this is my first time doing the live stream. I wanted to have a chance to, you know, just talk to you in real time. Hello, hello. I hope you're having a good weekend. Um, I will be working on my, oh wow, it looks really weird on camera. Um, it's basically the, the digital version for my fairy print. I kind of like how it's like iridescent. That's kind of trippy. Ooh. But since my beginner's pro create video was so short, I wasn't really able to answer all the questions you guys had about digital art or just about like traditional drawing as well. Um, so I thought I could answer questions that I otherwise can't format into a video, which is why, you know, I thought it would be fun to host the chit chat and I'm very happy to have so many people join the live. I kind of am a little shook. <laughs> iPad Air 3. Um, this is the iPad Pro, like, 2000. Wait. Let's read. Okay. It should say about, about this iPad. Mm. It doesn't really say, because this one is not mine. But the one I got is the 2017 iPad Pro. Hello. Hi, Mom. <laughs> My mom is here. Hello, Mom. Thank you. Wow. OK, so the goal today was not only am I going to work on this digital piece for the fairy print, I'm hoping that I can um, print this really big, maybe next year, since it's already November, but, okay, it's really hard to show this, I didn't know it was going to look like this on camera. I'm also working on uh, revamping the Piper Blue website, so that my sister and I can have a joint shop for our prints, and stickers, and fun stuff like that, so I thought it would be great if I could custom draw the logos and icons, just, you know, to make it a little more personal. Yeah, stickers. I'm really excited about stickers. My sister's like more excited than I am. She's like, I want to draw stickers. And I was like, yes, you can draw stickers. Wow, India, that's so far. I've never been, but I actually do want to visit because I watched this documentary of a city in India where they did a lot of embroidery and textiles for fashion weeks and stuff. Hello. Yes, the prints will be available for international shipping. That is, I'm going to make that a priority because I think it's not fair if I can't, you know. <laughs> Hello, London. I haven't been to London in like five years. When I went, I was 18. And, you know, I was sort of in that teenage phase where I thought I was like too cool to go on vacation with family. Um, I kind of regret not, uh, like not appreciating the time I had with my mom and my sister because nowadays it's so hard to get the whole family together and do something. All of our schedules are different. Um, so now when I have a chance to, go on vacation or travel with my mom, especially like my family. I try to like hold on to it tightly because I know as I grow older and get busier with my career, it's gonna get harder. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, the weather is definitely getting cold. I'm kind of freaking out because one of the heaters I have for my hedgehog broke and I have an African pygmy hedgehog, so they can't hibernate because if they hibernate, they won't wake up and they have to stay like ideally within like 74 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how much that is in Celsius, but I have to go get him a heater today right after my print. I'm going to my table.
Poland, wow, hello. Hi, hi. Sorry, my sister is texting me something. Ooh. She's asking about another event. Interesting. What have I been up to since graduation? Well, I I had a hard time deciding if I wanted to stay in California or um, in, on the East Coast. I thought about New York or Boston. I'm not sure if I'm going to move to New York anymore. I really wanted to. But financially, it's just not a good idea right now. And I feel like it would give me, it wouldn't put me in a good place, like mentally. So maybe either stay in Providence or go to Boston. I feel like Boston, the odds are higher. I do like New England. I like this area. Mm, what else? I started a YouTube. I started a part-time job. I am an after-school teacher for grades kindergarten through third grade. So I have five separate classes with about like 50 students per week. And then um, I'm teaching them how to make toy theaters. So introducing them to storytelling and narrative and like different aspects of theater, such as, you know, like props or like backgrounds and actors and giving them a little bit of space to work with like three dimensionality, like perspective, or like hierarchies when it comes to storytelling. So that's what I'm doing with them. Um, it's hard to keep their attention. <laughs> they get bored quickly. So I have to find a way to break my lesson down into multiple pieces so that we take a break and then we do more work and then we take a break because it's hard to expect them to just sit there for 90 minutes. Like it's not gonna happen. Introduction to astrology. Hmm. I don't know how to go about that. Oh, my job. Oh, my gosh. Wait, okay. I'm going to get back to the astrology part. But I also want to reply to my sister because she hates it when people don't reply to her right away. For my job, so I basically had the terrible mental, like I had this terrible meltdown about three weeks ago. Uh, I was like, I'm never gonna find a job. I'm gonna be broke. I'm gonna live on the street. And then like all like sad and stuff. And then and then I had a really good friend who just kept pushing me. Like he kept encouraging me to, you know, sign up for different job hunting sites. So we used collectively like three, four different ones. And then when I was feeling like, oh, like I just wanna lie in bed. I don't wanna stress over finding a job because I was already crying a lot earlier but then he would like gently encourage me to do something about my stress instead of just letting it take over and then um so when I applied to CDL which is what the program I work for they responded right away I literally got an interview two days after they initially emailed me um fashion related videos yeah I would love to do fashion related videos I was actually thinking for like actual lookbooks it might be on Annabelle's channel cat creature and then if I do fashion videos that implements a little bit of drawing like oh drawing my outfit you know kind of like a journal like a bullet journal thing then I would have it on Piper Blue just so that we keep this channel for viewers who really want to see art related content. From Turkey hello I got into astrology when I was about, I was in fifth grade when I first heard about it. I had a friend who was like, oh, you're a Taurus because you're born this month. And I had no idea what it meant. In middle school, me and my best friend went to the bookstore often. And then we would browse through the astrology section. But all the books only talked about sun signs. So I had no idea what a natal chart was until I was in college three years ago, four years ago. That's when I started seriously studying astrology, trying to understand the different components, like what are cardinal signs, what are elements, um, what are houses. Houses was a little tricky. I didn't get a house until maybe a year or two after I started studying. So I stuck with sun sign, moon sign, rising sign for a good seven, eight months, just trying to understand 
all 12 signs and how they work with each other within that parameter and then uh, talking or investigating into other people's charts. Would I save translation? Oh, I have two different circle lenses because one of them dried up. <laughs> I don't I didn't cap it properly when I was flying over from California. So now I only have like one brown. So I I, I use the, the blue one. That's so cute that you guys bought a book together. Tarot deck, I recommend my very first tarot deck was actually Shadowscapes by Stephanie Law, I think. Um but for a beginner deck. Anything. I think there's a deck called Golden Universal. Yeah. So the Golden Universal Tarot deck on Amazon is really great because it almost matches perfectly with the Rider weight, and it's a good way to learn. And it's prettier. Oh, my mental health has been better than when I was in school, I would say. I think it's because... Um, YouTube really keeps me focused. I have a lot of short-term goals, right? Like weekly, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I want to show or like what I want to share. And then it's all about putting in the hard work to make it happen instead of feeling aimless. Like, I don't know what to do with my time. So I'm so sorry, like the questions are going really fast. I'm gonna try to answer without speaking too quickly. Um, I can't speak or understand Cantonese, which is ironic because I lived in Guangdong when I was little. So I actually can speak Chinese fluently. I can read. I can't write. Um, I can use like pinyin and stuff. But Thank you for complimenting my makeup. Um, Arza? Yeah, thank you. And then... My mom and my sister were not, they were skeptical at first. My mom was actually pretty upset when I was in beginning of high school, like reading books on tarot. She didn't really understand where that was coming from. And she was like concerned that I was like getting obsessed with something that might not be safe. Like she just had no idea what it was. And then now she like, her attitude has totally changed. She asked me, she's like, can you do my, can you do my chart? And I'm like, mom, you don't have your birth time. And she keeps asking me to do her chart and her friend's charts and stuff. And it's really nice that even though uh, we observe different forms of religion or spirituality, it doesn't come in conflict with each other. Right now it is 12.29, so it's noon time. I am on the East Coast in America. I do think Grizzly is a good school but I think I learned more at Art Center. Yeah. Um, technical wise, like technical skill, getting good, like how to do something better, faster. I think Art Center is a great place for that. And then RISD has more culture or it gives you more room to like investigate context. Whereas Art Center is really, really focused on like how to do something really well and then not building the concept right or the idea as much. Uh, oh, I, people keep saying I look like Jisoo from Blackpink or like they, they will give me different idol names and then sometimes I get them mixed up. Oh yeah, like <laughs> I watched that long video about BTS and then after I watched it, I just feel like I totally misunderstood BTS as a group and I just like suddenly have so, like I have such a strong connection to what the members want to do or like their intention of forming a, a group together. I really admire that how each of them, like it's not really about the money or the fame, it's just about like the work. It's just about like making music and that's what drives them. And like, I can relate to that, I think. How do I style my fringe? I use a straightener, okay, like this. And then I curve it right here. And then I hold it for like two seconds and I let go. <laughs> um, making a tarot deck. Um, 
It might be easier to make a tarot deck if you have help from a spirit guide, but you have to be really careful about what spirit you work with because it's easy for them to impersonate other spirits. So you just want to make sure you get the name right and that you make it very clear who you want to work with to help you make the cards. Hello from Hungary. Wow. Um, I am, I studied paganism a little bit, but I'm trying to take it slow so that I don't accidentally fall into the trap of misinformation. And since my family doesn't have a tradition of being pagan, I just have a lot of research to do before I decide like, oh, this is something for me to practice in my personal life. Make a tutorial? Oh my god, Iris still hasn't uploaded it? We filmed one. It's supposed to go on her channel. She's still working on it. Hello from Brazil. I love Brazilian artists. Some of my favorites are from Brazil. Favorite artist? Oh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Uh, is it Mana Hill? Mana Hill? Mana Hill? Mana Hill? I'm so sorry. Hello from Switzerland. I don't have a fashion style. I just wear whatever, like, my interest changes really quickly because my, my Venus is in Gemini and Venus rules your, like, sense of beauty, appreciation for beauty, and it kind of rules your love relationships. So my Gemini placement in that just makes me very fickle and my attention can change quickly. Advice on making friends. Um, hello from Canada. Advice on making friends. I think it's really important to recognize that um, you should have boundaries first or like if you, if you want friends because you feel like something is lacking, it's different from wanting to be friends because you're excited about like something they're doing or about a common interest or um, a shared like similar lifestyle because mm. I think it's because I feel like I'm the type of person that attracts friends who are always like draining my energy my emotional energy not because they're ill intention I think it's just because they're at a point in their life where they just need someone to vent to to sort of like re uh, detox from the negative um, actions that they have in their life. But then after venting to me, they'll just go back to doing the same thing again and not listen to any of my input or feedback when I try to empathize with them and tell them, oh, like if this is really bothering you, maybe you can try this. And then they just like totally ignore what I said. And then like the next week they'll come back and like vent to me again about their, um, like troubles with relationship or school and stuff like that. So I think that's also a reason why my, like I don't have that many friends actually, because I learned the hard way not to be taken advantage of. Yeah, by friends. So I think what I was trying to say about making friends is um, like recognizing what you can do to like help the other person or be there for the other person is more important than having a friend because you are missing something. Cause that's, that's something that only you can provide for yourself, whether it be like confidence or like, um, what else? Like self-esteem, self-image and stuff like that. It's like, you need to have the intention to want to work on it first before you like, like expand outward and influence other people's lives. That sounded kind of like mean. I don't know if that, if that came out right because we're still in the retrograde. So the communication is not really good right now. Um, if you don't know the exact date for your chart, there is a method to reverse and estimate the chart based on like your characteristics. If you Google it, if you Google like how to like reverse and find the time. <laughs> oh, scary. Sorry. I think Nobu like jumped and did something. Nobu is a cat. 
um, moved out of college. Oh, thank you for saying that. That means a lot to me. I'm really sorry that I'm not able to answer all the questions. I didn't expect this many people to come. I thought maybe like it'll be like 20 people and I can like, you know, have long conversations with everyone. Oh, um, I really like for, for the Brazilian artists, I really like Ilio Oitetsika and I like um, Legia Clark. They are Brazilian, right? Did I get it mixed up? I feel like they are. I wrote a 10 page paper about them uh, two years ago, especially Oitesika. Um, and then, oh, story time on a draining friend. Okay. So I had this best friend that I like really genuinely loved and believed in when I was taking my gap year. And then, like looking back, I feel like she just wasn't in the right place in her life to make that a two-way street. So she would always come over to my place. You know, she'll always sleep over because um, her relationship with her parents wasn't very good at the time. She like dropped out of school and I was trying to encourage her, maybe we can work on our portfolios together and like apply to the school of our choice. So like I apply for RISD, right? And she ended up not doing that. Um, and there were just many instances where it was just like, I'm offering, you know, like my, my personal space, my room, my home to her. I'm offering like food or like just things that she was stressing out about because she didn't want to go home to her parents sometimes. And then she was also in a weird relationship that I felt like wasn't good for her but when I tried to communicate that to her she would like lash out and become very defensive and like accuse me of wanting to get with her partner which doesn't make any sense from my perspective and then um so yeah it was just I feel like she wasn't really being a good friend but it took me a long time to realize that I can't help her and it was kind of hard because um, we would call every day or like I would see her every day but I misunderstood that as oh she must really like me you know I thought uh, she must really enjoy spending time with me but I think it was literally because that was the better alternative than facing her reality and facing like um, challenges that she needs to overcome herself so she was always like running to me and stuff so yeah that was really long-winded I'm sorry any good music? Mm -hmm. My favorite band of all time is Beach House. I really like their song, Myth. Um, I also really like Marika Hackman. She came out with an album. I believe it's called We Slept At Last. It's really amazing. I recommend listening to it without shuffle. I really, uh, I respect the order of the songs. So for example, Tyler, the creator, I never listened to his songs on shuffle. Um, same with uh, Kendrick Lamar, uh, um, what else? Like he had an album called Damn, I think in 2017. I think like their narratives are very intentional and strong. So I let it just kind of like, I let the story unfold the way they, they wanted to. Oh, I listened to Doja Cat. I remember when I first graduated high school, I listened to uh, Nunchucks a lot. I listened to a little bit of Banks, but not, I can't pinpoint any songs right now. I really love Ichigo Aoba. Yeah, my friend Summer recommended her to me, I think, last year. And I love how all of her album covers are like a pastel color. It's just so soothing. It's, um, because you guys know I don't really listen to music when I work, but I think Ichigo Aoba I can actually listen to when I'm in studio, like drafting or sketching, it doesn't get distracting for me. Um, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that um, about your grandmother. I hope that you and your family are doing okay. Um, relationship with creativity and inspiration. Mm. Mm. 
I think for me, it's a byproduct that I get out of my pursuit of like the other bigger idea. So like astrology, right? Uh, creation myths, um, traditions and hierarchies that existed before the Romans and Greeks took over. So before the Romans and Greeks, most of civilization was matriarchal and all the priests were priestesses, right? All the rulers, all the, like the, the, the one at the top of the, tri like the one with the most wisdom and the one making the, the one making decisions was a woman. So I read a lot of books about how that changed, how um, a community was different when it was matriarchal versus patriarchal. And then how women are sort of evolving and adapting, and then how we learn to overcome and thrive despite the setbacks that we experienced, especially like during um, the Enlightenment or other times where it was like established that like men had rights. But is that that's like a whole other thing? So it's like me thinking about these ideas and being interested, and then reading about it. I'm like, oh wow, I didn't know that this actually happened in history and it didn't happen that long ago. Like the recorded history is not that long considering how long earth has been around. So all of these things will like excite me. And then like the, creati the creativity is like the spark that comes from being excited about learning something new for me. Yeah. Oh, oh these are going really fast. Thank you so much for all your lovely compliments about my work. I really appreciate it. I don't have insomnia. I sleep like a baby because A, I got a humidifier. I splurged and got like kind of an expensive one because it's shaped like a cloud on Amazon. So having the humidifier helps me breathe. And then B, I listen to rainy sleep music on YouTube. That's like 10 hours long. And I just like sleep like that. I'm just like gone. I'm like out like a light. <laughs> oh, I do tarot card readings. I also do natal chart readings. I might or might not offer that as a service um, available for people. So far, I just do it for my friends and family. Mm. What do you do when you need space from friends, family, or art? Hmm. I try to make a new playlist, like a, like a Spotify playlist. And I try to find as, as many new songs as possible so that, you know, like my mind is extremely concentrated on this task. And I'm also being exposed to new sounds. And like for me, that's a great way to like separate myself from uh, my life at that moment without feeling unproductive. So sometimes I'll get a mood like, oh, I kind of want to make a playlist that's like, you know, like wee wee dove emoji, like summertime in France. But then like I want some like guitar sounds. I want it to be romantic, but not too slow. And then I'll like basically look for similar artists or like branch out and then curate and then find it and then feel really satisfied at the end. Um, why Lilith? Do you have a boyfriend? No. I am the single Pringle. <laughs> the single Pringle. It's okay. Um, yes, I listen to Animal Crossing Rain music a lot. Mm. I don't think art school is necessary to become a successful artist. I, I don't know. I've had some people ask me about tattoo commissions. I never thought that it would be something people would want from me. Do you think it will be a good idea? I don't even know like how it works, um, like in terms of pricing or deadlines and stuff like that. But that sounds kind of cool. Like if I can create something that somebody would actually have on their body, it just seems like very intimidating to me. Do you have any advice dealing with stress and uncertainty in my final year? Mm. Honestly, my final year, I was just so excited because, because I, um, I was having constant flashbacks of how I was 
my freshman and sophomore year, like feeling like, oh, there's so much school left, but then I'm not doing anything that is meaningful or um, like all the classes I'm taking now isn't gonna matter when I graduate and I'm being like really pessimistic. So my final year is just like, look, like I overcame that time where I felt really hopeless or I felt like, uh, like very hard on myself or down on myself. I don't know how to phrase that. So my senior year, I was just really like looking ahead, like knowing that I'm like my career is going to be so long. It's going to be so much more expansive than my experience as a student. And then that I can literally do anything or be anywhere, or like I can finally make decisions for myself. And then um, all the hard work I put into my career, like shaping it is going to count. Like all the times I spend staying up or extra time I spent like researching and looking into something, it all counts. And then, so that was like very exciting. Um, yes, I do worry about future income as an artist. I think like I worry about my student loans. I worry about, you know, like paying the bills and stuff. But what, that's kind of why I am doing YouTube because I think it's a great way to learn how to market and brand myself as an artist so that in the future, you know, because I'm going to be interacting with people who don't understand my art or people who don't know where I'm coming from. So like getting used to that social interaction so that I can get better at networking. I think that's really important. And then I think hopefully I will be able to find like better and better jobs that way. Um, something I wish I did as an artist. Oh, hey, I wish I did foundation year at RISD. Not gonna lie. Um, I know I said that our center is better in terms of technical skill improvement, but I think our center is such a narrow tunnel. You apply with the major intended, like I apply with illustration portfolio, and then I just started right away with illustration foundation year. I had no idea what sculpture was. I had no idea what film, like I had no idea what jobs those majors could have led to. So a little bit bummed out about that. But I, it's, it's okay, because I think with illustration, it's so broad now that I can literally do anything I want. Like, if I wanted to make stop motion animation with, like, polymer clay characters, I can. And nobody's stopping me. <laughs> um, was changing my name stressful? It was easier for me because I transferred schools. So when I, basically, when I started my first semester at RISD, I just introduced myself as Lilith. I told all my teachers, I, I emailed them. I was like, I, this is a different name from the roster. This is my preferred name. Um, and then they were very respectful. And like, I've never had an issue with any faculty or students like being confused or, or um, using the wrong name. So I think that helped. That helped me transition because that way, like, I don't accidentally hear my old name and then turn around because no one calls me that. And then so now when people call me that, I don't even respond. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've had very big artist blocks during my gap year because uh, I didn't realize how long a gap year was since our center runs on trimester. Usually you can ask to, you can ask to take a semester off, which is about 14 weeks, right? And 14 weeks already felt like a very long time. So when I was doing the gap year, getting ready to change schools, it just felt like never ending, or like I felt like I wasn't moving forward. And um, it just felt like what I did doesn't matter in the long run. So there's no point in trying something new. It took too much energy out of me at the time. Um, how would you say is the best way to improve as an artist and what do you want if that makes sense? Um, I think the most important way to improve as an artist is mileage, especially as a student, speaking from personal experience. Um, because when I look at all of the amazing artists on Instagram or 
you know, like in magazines or like through media, I see all these like amazing, amazing artists like Victor Nye or James Jean, like legends <laughs> in the illustration world. And then I think to myself, like, wow, like their stuff is so amazing. Like, I, I don't think, I don't know how I'm going to get to that point. But the problem is like what they show, the work they show is probably only five to 10% of their entire like artist career, everything else like didn't make that bar. Do you know what I mean? So I think I've said this at some point, I don't remember when, but you have to really get the bad work out of your system. You have to mess up many times in order to get better or in order to train your eye to identify the mistakes. Like if you're drawing like character design or like background artists and stuff like that, where things are more technical, and then for fine artists, you can sort of train um, train yourself to communicate better through the medium you're working with. So if you're in sculpture, you can sort of like learn to break the boundary of how materiality is and how you can juxtapose or like throw out your concept differently. For, for example, because I TA'd for a sculpture class for two years at RISD, I TA'd freshmen, right? And then whenever they asked, like whenever the professor asked for them to come up with a concept and make a sculpture, a lot of them was like very, they would hit a wall where it's like, oh, I want to express my struggles as an Asian American woman, woman growing up here. And then they would sort of like make it too literal, you know? Um, I remember this one student was like trying to talk about vulnerability so then she made like a really big hand and then like a like a very like delicate like bird's nest and stuff so in that sense she was still bound by the representation of objects and ideas and then so like improving as an artist means like if you want to express vulnerability like how can you do it without creating something that already exists in the world, which is like kind of hard. I, I know I'm blabbing, I'm so sorry. I like. <laughs> I don't actually know that many online art shops, unfortunately, but I'm going to look more into it. Like I'm gonna look into it so that I can do more research and figure out how to like price and like make my shop cute and stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for protecting your ego sense of self when going to art school? Art school is such a bubble. I don't know if the other schools are like this. I would imagine a school like UCLA or like Berkeley because you have so like the student body is so big. You can literally meet somebody new multiple times a day and then never see them again. I feel like it's different from art school where there's a lot of gossip that I don't, I'm not very fond of. And I never really was a part of it because I transferred. So I just hear about it. Um, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that like after art school, like it just goes away so fast. It's the same as like, um, like gossip in middle school or high school, like when everyone graduates and everyone like splits and like goes in different directions, what happened in school almost like doesn't really carry over anymore. A lot of people change very quickly also throughout college. And um, I think having a strong sense of self requires a lot of introspection and like learning not to ask like like kind of like learning that you don't need to be validated by your peers and that they're also struggling in the same way that you're struggling so if you're asking them to carry your emotional baggage and burden when they have their emotional baggage and burden chances are it's not going to work out the way you guys expect it to work out i really love kay nelson um, I've, I've been meaning to buy his book, East of the Sun, West of the Moon, but I'm like saving up for it because, you know, like the catalog is a little expensive, but I would love to have that in my collection. I collect catalogs, so I have a Jim Gold, Goldberg 
Rich and Poor. That's one of the first books I bought. It was really expensive. It was like a hundred and something dollars. Like this big book. Um, and then I also have a couple of Nobuyoshi Araki. I also have Sophie Kali. I love her books. I think her books are really worth collecting just because they're just so different from other catalogs in terms of how she uses color, how she uses different uh, transparent and opaque papers. And then she always like, has like cut throughs and then you can like look through them. It's a lot of fun. Journal with me, that sounds like so much fun. I would love to do that. I've been meaning to show you guys my Hobonichi because it came in, my mom, Oh, Tyler helped me. Um, he shipped it here for me. And I think at one point I was telling you guys about how in my journal, I would like write in funny ways so people can't read it. Yeah. I was going to share that with you, but I'm like really scared that somebody's going to like screenshot it and then like read all the embarrassing things I write <laughs> about my day. And I'm like, oh, is that smart to have that on the internet? I'm not sure. I'm so glad that you read Bluettes. It's one of my favorite books of all time, as you already know. Where do I get my clothes? This one, my mom bought for me. Look, it's like the, it's like the rabbit candy. Oh, my foot is asleep. <laughs> this one my mom got for me when she was in China. Oh, my undershirt showing. Not cute. I... Most of the clothes I buy from myself are from thrift stores. And then the clothes that, um, I would say 60% of my wardrobe is gifted or hand-me-downs for my mom and my sister. And then 40% is things that I have thrifted over the past four or five years. I kind of just wear the same things all the time. I don't buy new clothes often out of laziness, I think, because I'm lazy to try things on. And then I'll look at it and I'm like, oh, that's like so much work. I'll like come back and like, I always tell myself I need new pants or like I need a new something cause my pants always rip in studio. And then I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll get around to it eventually and then I never do and I still need pants. I don't have enough pants. Thank you. I make a lot of weird sounds. I apologize beforehand. Aww. How do you stay grounded throughout busy and stressful times when work life and social life are very hectic? Throughout the years, I've created a safe space for myself uh, that consists of being in a specific spot, usually my bed or near my bed, that's one, and then having a stuffed animal who is sort of like my guardian, like kind of like my buddy. Um, so that's two. And then wearing the same thing. So like when I'm very down or sad, I have, you know, a sweater that I definitely will wear. That's like kind of like old and like ring, like ugly looking. So I don't wear it outdoors. I just wear it, I just wear it at home. And then I'll have like a specific set of PJ pants or a specific um, like pair of like really fuzzy socks that I just like save because I like it so much. I'll save it for when I'm like really just really down or like got up from the wrong side of the bed or something. So the combination of all of these things together already puts me in a better mood. On top of that, I enjoy watching anime about school life, sort of like a, a slice of life stuff that puts me in a good mood too. So um, for a while I watched Kimi ni Totoke, which is about this girl learning to make friends in school. And it was, it's just so wholesome. And it makes me appreciate like the friends that I have that's that have been here for me for years. Because when I was growing up, I moved a lot. So I didn't have that many close friends until high school. And then I have like two good friends from high school that I still communicate with almost like every week. I have not watched Parasite. I watched the trailer and I got scared. So I don't know if I should watch it. I'm easily spooked by loud noises and anything jumpy at all. I'm like easily, it just like stays in my imagination. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like at night, it I, I can't calm down. And then 
I'll just think about it. And then the more you think about it, the more real it becomes and it's like this terrible spiral. So I just learned to avoid anything that could potentially freak me out to that extent where I can't go to the bathroom at night. <laughs> um, I haven't watched that one. I don't know how to pronounce it in Japanese, but I can read it in Chinese. It's not scary. Okay. I don't know. Like, is it scarier than Twin Peaks? Or is it like the same level as Twin Peaks? Because like Twin Peaks kind of scared me. I love the show so much. I really, really wanted to watch it like all the way through. And then second season. More. Oh. I am not eating dog or cat meat. That's really uh, inappropriate. <laughs> Okay, then maybe I will. Because my sister watched it. If she watched Parasite, then I should be okay. She's more sensitive than I am, actually, with stuff like that. Dream country to visit. I really would love to visit Berlin. Um, I've been thinking about if, uh, for my very first solo trip abroad, like my very first time traveling by myself, I would like to visit Berlin. Mm -hmm. I think that's like, in terms of timeline, that's going to come up first. Yeah. Oh, I love Nana. It's so good. I tried ceramic in middle school. I liked it. I never got a chance to try it in college because the wait list was always so long. I never get into the class. I have thought of visiting London again, again but because I've already been there once, I thought maybe I can visit other cities that I haven't really gotten the chance to explore. I do not have extensions in my hair. Hello. Is your favorite city? That's so exciting. You have to tell me more about it. I just know that it's a great place for artists. I know uh, a faculty member from RISD who went back because she couldn't get used to how Americans work in terms of like artists she felt like it was very dead here compared to berlin and that and that sort of fascinated me a little bit favorite nail styles mm, i like japanese nail styles i like having extensions but they're these are really starting to get in the way so i'm thinking of just like at some point i'm gonna have to trim it i like the translucent, like glass tips that my friend Iris does. Uh, would you ever move outside of the country? I probably will not move outside of the country. I do plan on spending a few years abroad to earn my master's degree. I plan on going to Beijing. Hmm. Uh, hopefully within the next five, 10 years, five years. <laughs> It'll probably take me three years to do the master's. So I'll be, I, I would be in Beijing for three years. Like when I visit China, it's kind of a culture shock to me because like people get really uncomfortable when I look them in the eye and they're like, why are you looking at me? And I'm, like, I'm trying to show that I'm listening to what you're saying. This is like the American way of showing respect when someone is speaking, you gonna make eye contact. And then you have like slight body language, like nodding or things like that. And then like, they don't really have that. Yeah, I want to go to Beijing. I really want to apply for Zhongyang uh, Meishu Xieyan because a couple of my idols went there, like shipping. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joy. You're so sweet. What court card? Mm. Because you can ask Tarot which card you are, I think, I feel like I talked about this on my Instagram story. Basically, if you have a deck, you can sort of like shuffle and then you can ask Tarot like, which one am I? And it'll come out and they can ask which card represents like my mom, my boyfriend or girlfriend, um, my best friend, and then it'll all come out. And then you can sort of see like the relationship dynamic you have within your close network of friends and family. So for a long time, I was Queen of Cups, and then I evolved and became Queen of Swords. Yeah, 
that's the two that I can remember right now off the top of my head. So this was 2017, 18. In your art, do you strive for perfection? I can't talk anymore. In your art, do you strive for perfection? I do, and I'm trying to learn to let that go because it's not healthy for me and it gets in the way. I think it's more important to focus on like doing the next one or moving on to the next one and just making more, having like a whole body of work instead of just one really precious thing that I can't mess up ever. Uh, I might do a video about tarot card reading, but I feel like there's so many videos about stuff like that nowadays or like websites or like it's so easily accessed information. I'm not sure if it's gonna be like interesting enough. What if people think it's like repetitive? or like boring. Um, if I film a makeup video or a fashion video, it would probably be on Cat Creature. Like I would ask Annabelle if I can be a guest on Cat Creature and then I would do that. Cause I think it will be kind of fun. Cause my sister does sort of Western, like American makeup, I think. And then whereas I'm more Chinese or Eastern with you know, like where I put my blush, like how I use my contour, like how I use my lipstick and eyeshadow. And then I thought, like I've, I've talked to her about it for years. I was like, we should do like a video where we contrast our makeup. So it will be really fun if we can do that on Cat Creature. Yeah, is it is that by tool. Yeah. Thank you. Favorite color, it is, my, my favorite color of all time is blue-gray, but that seems kind of boring, right? So my second favorite color is probably red. Yeah. You know those aura pictures you can take? Like, have you guys seen those uh, Polaroids? It's like a Polaroid of somebody, and then there's like this foggy color around them, and it's supposed to be the color of your aura. They take the picture by having your hands placed on a metal plate while they um, snap the photo. And I, I think it has to do with like the temperature of your hands or something. But when I did my aura photo, it was like bright red. It was like red like here and then like magenta here and then it becomes red. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, I do really like red. Hello, Singapore. Whoa. Singapore is so cool to me. Um, I've read a little bit about Singapore's architecture. I know that Singapore has won a couple of awards for like creating um, environmentally friendly, like large, huge scale buildings that like, what, what is it? Don't you guys have that thing where it's like a lot of really big trees? I don't know what that's called, but I was, in, I was at Art Center when I learned that um, the person received a design award for that. I thought it was really cool. Hello, hello. Um, I visited Japan in April, through almost three years ago, two and a half years ago. I would love to go back because I only went to Tokyo to see my aunt for five days. And I would like to spend some time in other parts of Japan, especially, uh, like one of my dreams is to be able to like do that like shrine thing where you like, you know, if you visit each shrine, you get like a stamp and then you have a little notebook full of all of the stamps. And then the Metro station also has stamps. Yeah. I kind of have like a weird like collector itch. So all the phone games I play is all about collecting items, not really about like, like your high level or your like, mad like attacking skills or whatever <laughs> i think it's also why i like animal crossing because you get to collect all these different furniture and then there's like special the, like special edition and then like customizable furniture and then and stuff like that but strangely i never got into pokemon so i'm not sure what happened there yeah <laughs> so i'm actually going to wrap up this live now because i have to go get ready for my tabling event this afternoon where I'll be selling my prints for the very first time and I'm really nervous about like what to wear or like my setup and stuff. I shared a little bit of it on my Instagram. Um, I'm going to try and vlog a little bit of 
how the afternoon goes, like how the setup went and like what the space looks like and stuff. But I'm not sure if it's gonna make it into a video. So thank you so much for spending time with me. Uh, my sister just put up a new uh, sketchbook story. So right after this live ends, please go and you know like support her video. I'm really excited to see what she made as well. So I'm probably going to watch that video right after this. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I'm really moved by just how many people, you know, like want to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, it's like so much more than I thought. I really thought it was just gonna be like 20 people and then I'll like have a great time, you know? But thank you again. I would love to do this again, maybe with Annabelle next time. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you enjoy the live. I really, this really made my day, like it really made my week actually, just being able to talk to you all. So, okay, have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, bye-bye.